Welcome one and all to Puppet History Online University. Today, we'll be taking an ever-winding look at yet another chapter in the heavy, heavy book we call history, while our guests ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Master. I am obviously your beloved host, The Professor. Thank you, Ryan Bergara. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Special guest, Garrick Bernard. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Well then, let's crack in. To start us off, have either of you ever been in a fight? Not an argument, but a real, physical altercation. Unfortunately, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I have too, but I was very young, so I almost feel like it doesn't qualify. It counts, you know, fights happen when you're young. Yeah. Kids are mean. That is true. This kid was being very mean. He was being rotten. I picked him up over my head and I slammed him into the ground. Oh my God. Oh. Uh how did you get grown man strength at 12? I'm not quite sure. I got really, really angry. Uh, and to be fair, he was being quite racist. So I, uh, oh, I just- Oh, well, well, okay. Yeah, okay, fuck yeah, him. yeah, fuck, fuck that dude. Well, the subject of our episode today was the victor in a fight to the death. Fuck yes. And then another one. And another, and another, and another. Oh. Okay, well, a little bit of a pattern forming. <laughs> is this like a Coliseum type of situation? Oh, 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 wait, buddy. Over his career, he claimed to have triumphed in over 60 fights, most to the death, using a combination of strength, ability, and a total disregard for his opponent. We're talking about one of Japan's all-time greatest swordsmen, Miyamoto Musashi. For a second, it kind of sounded like you were describing like the Zodiac or something. Uh, <laughs> no, oh man, that would be a bummer. Imagine if the Zodiac killer was just fighting people to death. Yeah, like, exactly. Wasn't a serial killer at all. Look, those kids in the car challenged me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Miyamoto Musashi was born in 1584, around a turning point in the history of Japan. After nearly a century of turmoil culminated in the epic battle of Sekigahara in 1600, Japan was entering the Edo period, which began nearly 250 years of relative peace. Well, there's some uncertainty surrounding Musashi's early life, but it's generally agreed that his father was Hirata Munisai, a samurai vassal to a local lord. While Musashi probably didn't live with his father, the boy would visit his old man to learn swordsmanship. Eventually, however, Musashi became so much more skilled than his father that he stopped visiting. Take that, dad. Whew, that's brutal. I don't know if you can relate to this, Professor, because you don't play sports. Maybe, Garrick, you can. I know I you're a fan of basketball as well. It's yeah, yeah, heartbreaking, yeah. When, I imagine, when you beat your dad in one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, because it's not so much like he's getting more skilled, it's that you're getting old. Father Time is undefeated. Yeah, Father Time is dunked on so many people. It's also like that old thing, have you ever heard that thing where it's like, one day you'll pick up your child and set them down for the last time without ever knowing it. That is heartbreaking. Isn't that messed up? That hurts. One day, while walking home from a calligraphy lesson, Musashi saw a sign from one Arima Kiei, publicly looking for opponents to challenge him in a duel. This was a common practice by young samurai. No more than 13 years old, Musashi wrote a note accepting the challenge on the placard. When Musashi's uncle discovered his nephew, who wouldn't even be able to see a rated R movie by himself yet, had accepted a duel to the death, he begged Kiei to forgive the boy. Kihei agreed, as long as Musashi came and apologized. So, what happened next? A. When Musashi went to apologize, Kihei attacked the boy anyway. B. Musashi apologized and Kihei offered to train the boy. Or C. Musashi murdered Kihei. Ryan, what did you put? I put C. He murked him. Pretty fair guess. And yeah. Garrick? I'm gonna say A, he attacked him anyway. Well, let's find out what happened. Man, what a crazy time that people were just walking out like, I need to train. Let's train yeah. by murdering somebody. <laughs> right, exactly. Ha, huh, I see someone has accepted my duel. I shall prepare. Oh gosh, okay, hang on, hang on, sorry. Hello, my nephew actually wrote that. Can you please just not murder him? He's only like 12 or 13. Ha <laughs> ha! A youngster's prank, very good. So long as this lad comes and apologize, then I shall forgive his wily stunt. I'll go tell him, thank you so much. <laughs> what a scamp this boy is. I'm excited to meet him. Excuse me, are you Arima Kihei? Yes, you must be the silly boy who accepted my challenge. I am indeed Arima Kihei. Well, it's time to die! Oh shit, from blood of death. <laughs> yeah, of course. There it is. Point to Ryan! Little Beef Boy taking the lead early on. You're gonna stick with Beef Boy? Beef Boy! 
<laughs> Little beef boy. Well, this fight against Arima Kihei hooked Musashi, and he devoted the rest of his youth to mastering the art of sword. I'm gonna bring it back to basketball again. Sometimes when you're out there playing pickup, there's a guy who's barking a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the one who's talking the most. Big dog gotta bark. Big dog gotta bark. Exactly. Well, if you take, ooh, ooh, he's ooh, done ooh, all ooh, the legwork. Basically, yeah. you take him down, now you have everyone, everyone's respect. So I, I respect yeah. the move here. Three years later, Musashi left his native village and set off on an important period of development for young samurai called Mushashugyo, or traveling for improvement. During this time, a samurai warrior would wander Japan, living like a monk while testing his skills in duels. You know, a classic violent monk. <laughs> Eventually, if a samurai made enough of a name for himself, a provincial baron called a daimyo might hire him as a vassal. The samurai would swear loyalty to the daimyo, and would no longer have to wander around. It's kind of like being awarded tenure, but for, uh, you know, killing people. That's cool, man. I didn't realize there was like a samurai for hire business. That's fucking sweet. I would have hired a samurai. I think that's, that was a whole samurai thing. That's all anime. Like every that's single true. episode is just them being a bodyguard. No, they did battle in wars though too. I think, I don't know if that was a different name for a warrior. Are you thinking of the uh, the Tom Cruise film, The Last Samurai? Yeah, that's that exactly what I'm thinking of. Here? No, yeah, I'm, exa I'm thinking of Tom Cruise. But instead of doing that, Musashi spent his entire life as a ronin, meaning he was a samurai who never pledged allegiance to a daimyo. Maybe it was this dedication to traveling for improvement that allowed him to become so skilled at fighting but his victories were just as much mental triumphs as they were physical. He's a real one, man. Damn. I'm too good for any of you, so why would I chill here? And that's how you get like slow and fat. Yeah, that's true. That's how you turn into uh, Carmelo Anthony or something like that. Yeah, exactly. I know, that's re disrespectful to Carmelo Anthony. No, he deserves it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's his BC at this point, his body count? Uh, He's about 20 here. Damn, eight years. That's a lot yeah, of you time. You gotta just sort of extrapolate. Wandering for eight years, how many towns or villages yeah. have like top samurai? He's probably just walking in and being like, all right, who's the best? Let's get it on. He's probably like 10 bodies deep. That's a pretty respectable guess. I'm gonna give you a history point for that. There it is. Good conjecture. Ah! In the spring of 1604, Musashi was around 20 years old and hanging around Kyoto when he came across the Yoshioka family. There were eight schools of fighting in Kyoto at the time, and the Yoshiokas were the top of the top. When Musashi wrote to challenge Yoshioka Seijiro, the head of the Yoshioka Dojo, he must have seemed like a real country bumpkin trying to prove himself in the big city in way over his head. Sensing an easy win, Seijiro accepted the challenge and let Musashi pick the time and place. Big mistake. You don't want to give someone home court advantage. He's going to pick a bamboo forest and he's going to smack you with bamboo. Are you dumb? The Yoshioka style of fighting that Musashi would be facing was one of speed and subtlety. To counter this, Musashi approached the duel with a strategy he later described as irritating one's opponent. For instance, Musashi chose an outdoor setting for their duel, knowing that Seijiro had gotten used to the smooth floor of a dojo and the unsure footing outside would throw Seijiro off his game. Bamboo forest. I told you. This guy's kind of a wimp, no? I can only fight when I'm in my polished little dojo. You deserve yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like you're oh, not real. I can only play basketball on the hardwood floor of the Staples Center and not out there, uh, you know, at the park. Oh, it's got a, it's a double rim, bro. The double Come rim on, argument. <laughs> I, it's unbelievable. Rim, yeah. Yeah. Oh, always with the double rim argument. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, how else did Musashi irritate his opponent? A, he showed up late. B, he sang the entire time he was fighting. Or C, he insisted the fight happen in the nude. Oh man. All right, Ryan, what do you got? I went C, peens out. <laughs> uh, I don't care, <laughs> yeah. what'd you put? I went A, uh, he showed up late, like super late. That's actually funnier like, to me. Yeah, it's so much funnier <laughs> to just be like, nah, I, I, time and place, yeah, I'll say the time, but uh, I'll show up whenever. Um, well, point to Garrick. In a classic a-hole move, he showed up well after the time that he himself <laughs> set for the duel. It's so funny. He should probably showed up with Chick-fil-A. Yeah, dude. He says, oh, I'm sorry. I just had to get a coffee really quick. Masashi put himself in Seijiro's place and realized the longer Seijiro had to wait, the more time he would have to consider his own death. <laughs> <laughs> Zashi was weaponizing Seijiro's own imagination against him. Oh, I love this. This is like Michael Jordan. He's, all the great ones play mind Michael. games. When Musashi finally arrived, Seijiro was pissed. He reportedly hurled a slew of insults at Musashi, who egged Seijiro on further by simply smiling back. 
thoroughly in his opponent's head, Musashi began to duel. The rules of the match dictated that each warrior was allowed only one decisive attack with a wooden sword. The combatants slowly approached one another, looking for an opportunity to pounce. And in an instant, they made their moves, striking one another at the same time. Musashi's blow landed on Seijiro's left shoulder, and it must have been a hell of a bomb. Not only did it knock Seijiro unconscious, but it crippled his arm. Seijiro had little choice than to renounce his position as the head of the Oshioka Dojo and live the rest of his life as a monk. Jesus <laughs> Christ. He knocked his washed ass into retirement? Yeah, basically. It's shaving yeah. his head too. He's just like, well, yeah. you gotta go bald now. So there you go. <laughs> Holy shit. Hope you like making beer. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what did the Yoshioka clan do next? A, they asked Musashi to lead their dojo. B, they challenged him to another duel. Or C, they burned their own dojo to the ground in shame. Ryan, what'd you put? I put C, extinguish our embarrassment. And Garrick? I said A, please, please lead us. Uh, that would be certainly the smart thing to do. It certainly wasn't B. No, no, of course not. Uh, except it was, so points to no one. <laughs> they saw a guy get hit in the shoulder and then get knocked unconscious by that and was like, yeah, let me get a fucking turn. Yeah, basically. That so, is madness. The Yoshioka were not through with Musashi yet. The new head of the dojo, Yoshioka Den Shichiro, was Seijiro's younger brother and considered to be just as talented as his newly monked brother. <laughs> now, if you're thinking, well, someone just as good as a loser is still a loser, then congrats on thinking this through better than the Yoshioka. Shioka. <laughs> so he also got monked. Well, <laughs> getting monked is funny. <laughs> Dan Shichiro sent a challenge to Musashi, who accepted immediately. Since it worked so great last time, Musashi decided to arrive late to this duel as well. <laughs> Musashi continuing to drag the Oshioka name through the mud by being so disrespectful, Dan Shichiro was apparently nervous and irritated when Musashi finally arrived. When they finally began to fight, Dan Shichiro fared even worse than his brother. <laughs> with Musashi disarming him and using his own weapon to kill him. Oh, he killed him? He killed him. So this is... Sometimes you gotta make a business decision, and that means maybe I don't wanna block the guy who just dunked on somebody a play before. You step out of the way, let him have monked, it. He just monked on your brother. Like, don't, just relax. <laughs> All right, what did the Yoshioka clan do next? Oh. I already know. A, they asked Musashi to lead their dojo. B, they challenged him to another duel. Or C, they burned their own dojo to the ground in shame. Mm -hmm. All right, Ryan. I'm gonna go C, just finish it, please. Sure. And Garrick? I'm gonna go B because they're, they're fucking idiots and they're just gonna keep on going down the line. A point to Garrick. Wow. <laughs> wow, dude, unbelievable. So disappointing. Losers. Yeah, they're <laughs> yes. definition of insanity. It's a definition of insanity. As you have astutely observed, insanity has been described as doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. In that regard, you might say the Yoshioka were insane. Or you might say the Yoshioka were insane because the fighter they put forth to challenge Musashi, Seijiro's eldest son, Yoshioka Matashichiro, was a 12 year old. This may now be a case of Darwinism we're seeing here. That's just, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. It just is what it is. No real crime was committed here. If this was <laughs> any samurai movie, yeah. I think what'll happen is either A, he'll die by the 12 year old, or he'll see himself in the 12 year old and be like, I'll train you boy. I like that Let's second option, that's beautiful. That's very, so that second that's option second is option. very sweet, yeah. It's, it's more nice. than the family deserves, I'll say that. For sure, <laughs> 100%. The Yoshioka clan was desperate. Their reputation was suffering and they really needed a W to restore it. Therefore, in addition to Matashichiro, the family would be sending several archers and riflemen to ensure Musashi could not humiliate them any further. That's disrespectful. That's some, that's some like uh, Commodus shit in Gladiator. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, Gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> To his credit, or depending on how you look at it, not to his credit, Musashi took this challenge from a preteen very seriously. After all, he'd only been 12 or 13 when he won his first battle. So Musashi had good reason to prepare seriously for this fight. Good move. Self-awareness. Good move. You like to see it. Now, having a bit of a history with the Yoshioka and knowing they'd probably expect him to show up late, Musashi instead arrived at this third duel early and hidden a bush. <laughs> what? A nice zag on him. 
She's just like, just looking. As he watched the archers and riflemen arrive, Musashi did the only thing he could have done to survive the fight. He sprang out and killed Matashichiro immediately. With the young leader of the Yoshioka dead, Musashi was able to escape, having single-handedly destroyed a once-respected Kyoto clan. Rule of three, man. You gotta do something different on the third. Now, while there's plenty of stories of Musashi embarrassing other swordsmen throughout his 20s, it was his final battle that became his most famous. By the spring of 1613, Musashi had triumphed in nearly 60 straight duels. But Musashi wasn't the only decent fighter in Japan. Sasaki Kojiro was the principal sword master for one Hosokawa Tadaoki. It was rumored that Kojiro was a swordsman equal in skill to Musashi. And Musashi kinda wanted to find out if that was true. Musashi wrote a letter to Lord Hosokawa asking for permission to battle Sasaki Kojiro. Lord Hosokawa agreed and set the duel for 8 a.m. on April 13th on the island of Funajima. Oh, on the morning of April 13th, as the duel's appointed time approached, where was Musashi? A, still in bed. B, lying in ambush on the island. Or C, trying to steal a boat from a fisherman. Now, before we get to the answers, worth saying, pretty cool to have a duel on an island. No, yeah. I was just about to say, like, this kind of feels like when there's a big prize fight at the MGM Grand, which is why I chose A, napping. Um, Derek? I'm also gonna choose A because I don't think he wakes up in single digits. Eight o'clock, I mean, no. Well, let's find out what happened. Whoop. Uh, hello? Is this where Miyamoto Musashi is staying? Oh, oh my God, yes, hello. Oh. <laughs> what do you want? I was sent to see where you were. Come on, we gotta get up. I'm up, I'm up, jeez. What are you doing? We gotta go. I'm coming. I just need to wash up and get dressed. Then I'll have some breakfast, maybe some waffles or something. Good God. Hello? Yes, what do you want? I'm looking for Miyamoto Musashi. Is this where he's staying? Yeah, who are you? I'm a second messenger. Why didn't you bring him? I'm trying. This dude's an a-hole. Uh, okay, I just need to borrow uh. a towel, some bits of paper, and an oar. All right, uh. let's go fight to the death. Uh. It's classic Musashi, man. This is how nervous and anxious he is for this upcoming huge duel against a reported uh, yeah. major opponent. He's napping. So yeah, points to both of you, congrats. Great going. Eventually, Musashi ambled down to a boat owned by the guy with whom he was staying. While a servant rowed the boat, Musashi set to work on some arts and crafts. Oh, open-ended question. Keeping in mind he has some bits of paper, an oar, and a towel, what did Musashi make while being rowed to the island? And don't be afraid to get a little creative with your answers here. Have fun with it. Bits of paper, an oar, and a towel. Ryan, I put, put a, an unflattering dummy of his opponent, just going with the mind games. That's pretty good. And Garrick? I also put that, but I No, you did not. I God did. Damn it. Uh, I'll give you each a jelly bean for that one. Yeah, Hell yeah. Jelly bean. It's not right, but I love the synchronicity. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. In the boat, Musashi twisted the paper bits into string and used that to tie the sleeves of his kimono back so they wouldn't get in the way. Musashi also took the wooden oar and instead of using it to help paddle, he carved it into a sword. Does he not have a sword? Has he not I been guess using a not. sword this whole time? <laughs> no, he has been using a sword, but it seems like he perhaps just forgot it. Or this is just a big flex. I don't even need a sword. I'll use this. I'll beat your ass with this oar. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. I hope he doesn't die. After he was done crafting, and I guess because he was still tired even though he had slept in, Musashi laid back down. By the time the boat got to the island, he was more than two hours late. <laughs> there it is. With the boat still in the shallows, Musashi hopped out and used the towel to make himself a headband. As soon as Kojiro saw Musashi, he ran to the water's edge. In what I imagine to have been a common occurrence for Musashi, his opponent began to really holler at him, scolding Musashi for being so late. Musashi pretended not to hear Kojiro. <laughs> At one point, Kojiro unsheathed his sword and tossed his scabbard into the water. Finally, Musashi looked up and addressed Kojiro. Kojiro, you are lost. For if you expect to be the winner, why would you throw your scabbard in the water? Nice little bit of dirty talk. Or dirt, dirt, tr sorry, trash talk. Dirty dirt, talk not would be dirty whoa, talk. Whoa, whoa, what's happening over there in Puffin Sorry, I meant, I meant trash talk. We can get up to some stuff over here in this theater. <laughs> I don't like that. You don't I, have I, to like it. I, I do. <laughs> Kojiro was pissed. When Musashi finally approached, Kojiro swung at his opponent with the intention of splitting his head in half. Kojiro's sword, however, hit the knot in Musashi's towel headband instead. 
Musashi smashed Kojiro in the head, knocking him over. From the ground, however, Kojiro struck out and cut Musashi's kimono above his knees. Musashi used his wooden sword to start breaking Kojiro's ribs. Kojiro passed out and started bleeding from his nose and mouth. Musashi checked to see if Kojiro was still alive, which, like many of Musashi's opponents after being bludgeoned, he was not. He beat a man to death <laughs> with an oar after he came at him with a sword. Who is this man? An oar can't even be used to block the sword. He used his fucking towel to block a sword. <laughs> He's the greatest of all time. Musashi bowed to the duel's referees and hightailed it back to the boat, which he helped the servant paddle quickly back to the mainland. Because I, I think everyone watching got real pissed and he was like, all right, see you later. Ha -ha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that little scamp. A few days later, Musashi asked if he could fight another of Lord Tadaoki's vassals. Perhaps because he had just clubbed one of their best men to death, Lord Tadaoki's men never replied to the challenge and Musashi left. They're smart. They're, They're smart. much smarter like than the other guys. clan. While we may see Musashi's fighting MO as pretty dirty, Musashi had a different perspective. Musashi considered himself to be in battle from the moment a duel was accepted. All scheduling, debating over rules, and posturing were part of the fight. The fact that his opponents didn't see things that way? Well, that was just too bad for them. <laughs> and the body count Musashi left in his wake speaks to whether his was an effective strategy. I agree with you. You gotta respect it. Everyone knows that the, the game starts way before tip-off. His fight against Sasaki Kojiro was Musashi's final duel. Taking stock of a life spent wandering around bludgeoning dudes to death, Musashi decided his unprecedented string of victories was not the result of perfecting his craft, but due to luck and the weakness of his adversaries. That's humble. That's almost I think that's humble that, until the end. Oh, look, I'm not that talented. Everyone yeah. I fight it's, just is not as just talented sucks. as me. That's yeah. exactly what I was saying. That's yeah, that fake else humility. Is dumb. Okay, you're right. So, what did Musashi devote the rest of his life to? A, establishing a dojo in Edo, modern day Tokyo. B, traveling throughout Asia. Or C, art, writing, and being a dad. Easy, easy money. Right? Uh, this probably isn't right, but I'd, I'd love to see him be a, be a dad, pass on right. the lineage yeah. of blood. Yeah, he's gonna be an artist. Well, points to both of you. Dude, yeah. I love it, love to Watch hear it. Watch any samurai movie. They always end yeah. up with the sleeve and they're doing they the- They chill out. They chill. Between 1615 and 1624, Musashi adopted two children, Miyamoto Mikinosuke and Miyamoto Ayori. Musashi came across Mikinosuke when the boy was 14 or 15. Mikinosuke was tending to Musashi's horse, and Musashi was pretty impressed with the boy. So much so that Musashi asked the boy if he'd like to be his son. <laughs> hey. Hey, you want to be my you son? Wanna be you want to be my boy? I like the way you're tending to this horse. <laughs> <laughs> Mikinosuke was flattered, but informed Musashi that he was already some other people's son. <laughs> yeah. That's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> right. They were old, and they needed Mikinosuke to help take care of them. So, what did Musashi do? No. A, he killed Mikunosuke's parents. B, he bought Mikunosuke from his parents. Or C, he adopted Mikunosuke's entire family, parents and all. Oh. Please, God. Oh, God. I want to I wanna be wrong. Ryan, what do you got? I put C, not because I think what's right, but because I, I want it to be right. I want that to be the truth. Sure. But I got a feeling he killed these two parents. Yeah. And Derek? I say he killed those two parents. Well, thankfully, and a little horrifically, the answer is B. So points to neither of you. That's not uh, as bad. I mean, thank God. Musashi went to Mikinosuke's parents, told them how he wanted to adopt their kid, and they said, uh, sure. In return, Musashi gave the parents some money so they wouldn't struggle, and also stopped by the neighbor's house and kind of asked them to check in on Mikinosuke's former parents from time to time. Mikinosuke was his son now. Cool. Both Ayori and Mikinosuke were trained by their father to follow in his samurai footsteps, going on to serve as vassals for daimyos. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in addition to being one of the world's greatest swordsmen and buying his way into fatherhood, Musashi went on to be quite the accomplished artist. He designed the town at Akagi on Hoenshu and the temple gardens of Inakuin on Hoenshoji and excelled at painting. His painting style is often compared to his sword style as it prioritizes the execution of a perfect, irreversible stroke. Oh, what subject is Musashi best known for painting? A, birds, B, large landscapes, or C, 
Pacini, who insists I owe him, but is clearly mistaken. And I wish I had a wish left so I could wish Musashi here to teach him a lesson. This genie thing is, it's getting strange, man. It's not even a bit anymore. So people are talking. It's just a bit. You keep telling yourself that. I'm only doing this answer because I want to do this voice. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Ryan, what do you got? A bird. Birdie, birdie, birdie. birdie. <laughs> And Garrick? I'm going to say B, all of the landscapes that he probably saw. Just wet with blood. <laughs> wet with blood. Well, you can see the answer right here in one of his best known paintings, Shrike on a Withered Branch. Hmm. Beautiful. Cool. Point to Ryan. Birdie, birdie, birdie. Birds are all right. Probably pretty easy. You paint one bird, you got it you, down. You paint them all. Also, uh, a, sh a Shrike, that's a pretty brutal bird. Is it? I don't know much about Shrikes, but obviously... Yeah, we could see one right there. Pretty bird. They drop their prey on 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 branches and impale them. Jesus Christ, not a pretty bird. They're what the fucked fuck? Up. At the end of his life, Musashi wrote the book Gorian no Show, or the Book of Five Rings, detailing his style of fighting, which he called the School of Two Swords, and how it relates to a general philosophy on life. Most elite martial artists could neither read nor write, and disciples or Buddhist priests were left to write books about their styles. The fact that Musashi was able to write his own books showed how superior he was not just with a sword, but with a brain. In the Gorean no Show, Musashi preached the value of having an immutable mind. He also wrote, without knowing others, one cannot really know oneself. It's easy to see how these philosophies served him well in his dueling career. Musashi knew that by disturbing the mental state of his opponents, he would be able to take advantage of their nerves and fears, and take advantage he did. Today, the Book of Five Rings is studied not just by martial artists, but also philosophers and lame business managers. An impressive legacy from an impressive samurai warrior. Stephen Lim probably has that book. Oh, for sure. You know Lim's walking around with that one. First thing you gotta do in the school of business is ambush a 12-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> kill a 12-year-old. Dominate your opponents. Stephen Lim muttering that to himself on at his desk. Dominate, your, dominate your, opponents. your opponents, dominate your opponents. In 1642, Musashi began to experience debilitating pain, thought to be some form of chest cancer. Musashi's plan was to go to the mountains and wait for death in a cave like some sort of unbelievable badass. Unable to comprehend how absolutely metal Musashi was being, people were sent to find the samurai legend and bring him back to his home. On June 13th, 1645, Miyamoto Musashi passed away in Higo, Japan. That pisses me off that someone wouldn't let him die in the way he wanted. I hope he, he wrote these things while he was still young so that nobody was just like, oh, this is just the ramblings of an old man. It's like, I killed a man with an oar. Yeah, yeah, Grandpa, we know you yeah. killed a man with an oar. <laughs> sure you did. 60 fights. 60 sure, sure, fights, sure. all right. I killed a 12-year-old. Yeah, Grandpa. Well, that okay. we all know. Everyone just, knows yeah, that. Yeah, everybody. That's the only <laughs> yeah. thing we all remember. <laughs> Ten years after Musashi's death, his son Miyamoto Ayori had a priest carve an epitaph onto a large monument in Kokura, which still stands today. The inscription reads in part, Musashi's valor and great fame could not be overstated, even if the oceans had mouths or the valleys had tongues. Wow! That's good! That's great. What a life. Yeah. What a story. What a life. I mean, I know he's what a, a serial story. killer, but I kind of wish he was my dad. Well, for the right price, he could be. Well, that concludes our history lesson. I'm going to go tally up the scores to see who receives the Covenant Cup and the title of History Master. While I do that, please enjoy this special performance from one of the oars on Musashi's boat. Whoa. You've seen this show, right? Yeah. You see these dumb songs? Mm-hmm. They're not dumb. I like them. I know. Everyone does. Uh, uh, hello. Hey. I'm the oar from the boat. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> you okay? No. Musashi made a sword out of my friend. Oh. Oh, you're the other oar. Oh. I'm very sad. I thought you were supposed to sing a song or something. Are we were in love once. <laughs> oh, weren't we? <laughs> Dipped into the sea. Just you and me waiting in harmony. Oh, we were in love once. <laughs> or weren't we? But now I'm a sword, you see. Me and Musashi. Boy, we make him bleed. I long for the days our heads don't know is how we splashed and we smooched. Oh, remember. Well, now I'm a blade, and the one thing I crave is to slash and to swoosh and to spare my We are meant to be all we. Now this samurai 
eyes Cutting you down to size We must be dancing and would to not realize We just can't be Or can we? It's pretty clear to me I'd rather be weaponry On spilling door on the shore And I'm lost at sea Lost at sea this is beautiful. Oh, are they gonna kiss? <laughs> yeah, they were lovers. Oh, okay, they got close. Oh, oh, oh! Kiss! Kiss! Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Oh, oh come on! Ooh. Oh, yeah. oh, geez! Okay, all right, too much. All right, too much. Too much. Too much. Yeah. I thought they were gonna Jim and Pam us. Whoa! Oh, wow! Wow! Those guys are hot and heavy in here. You know what I'm talking Steamy. about? Steamy. They're right down there, and they're. Oh boy, they're really going for it. it. Looks like you're enjoying it. Yeah, you don't have to watch for that long. Holy moly. Well, you're not gonna believe this, but Garrick Bernard is our history master, and so he has rightfully earned the coveted cup. Yeah. Ryan, thanks for trying. Garrick, go claim your reward. You got an honest one for once. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, okay, Garrick, how's it going? I got a little cup. Garrick, you have dutifully earned that trophy. Hey, what happens if I eat the jelly beans? Oh, well, take a taste and find out. All right, I mean, um. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes, now you see the magical power of my wonderful little jelly beans. What the, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. Is he gonna turn back? Nope. Thanks for watching Puppet History, everybody. We'll see you next week. Woo! Jesus Christ. This hurts. <laughs>